Hi, beautiful souls. This is Sadhana. Welcome to my channel. Today, I thought I would share with you two versions of the Victorian fairy tarot that are still available, still in print. On the right, we have the Russian version, which I purchased through eBay. And on the left is the French version, which is available through Amazon France. And afterwards, I'll share with you the guidebooks and the boxes and all of that kind of stuff. The paper quality is great for both of them. Neither of them feels too thin, too thick. Um, they both shuffle really well. And let's just get into the cards and then we'll talk about all the other uh, details later. And I will do a reading at the end of the video. So if you want to stick around for that um, or fast forward, you can go ahead and do that now. So here we are. The, the color saturation is a little different. You can see it's a little more... Um, little more intense in the Russian version and also the cropping is different so you lose a little bit of the artwork in this shorter card and I believe the width is the same sorry I said I was going to leave the technical details till later so yes yeah, so it's a little bit wider and a little bit shorter okay and this is the only human that appears in the decks in the Fool card. So he has wandered into the forest at twilight when the veil is the thinnest and encountered the fairy world and is following the fairies off on his adventure. Beautiful. I love the details in this deck. It's just really, really stunning. A few of the names of the cards have changed in this deck. So here we have the conjurer for the, new, the magician. We have the seasons represented here. So instead of having the um, the objects like the pentacles, the swords and wands and so forth, we have seasons. So here we have winter, summer, uh, fall and spring. And from this card on all of the cards in the deck are fairies. Here is the CRS, I believe. And I'll refer to the Fool's Dog app perhaps throughout just to make sure I don't make any mistakes. I'm a little more familiar with French than. Oh, I love that she's using the the mushroom as her as her table. Sorry, I can read French a lot better than I can read Russian. This card, she looks so static. I wish there was a little bit of movement or more emotion in this Empress. So it definitely shows the Victorian uh, era queen kind of energy, right? She's very, very, very stiff. Lots of children around here, but everybody's well-dressed and not much is going on. And then here's the king. Love his wings. And I, this really interesting down here, I think in this card and some of the cards in this deck, you're going to really kind of pick up on other things like this younger, smaller fairy here in the foreground, looking at the world. Like if this card came up with perhaps the two of uh, fire, you know, that, that kind of thing. I mean, it's, there's lots of details in these images and I hope the camera angle is sufficient to kind of get an idea. And here is the pasteur, so the hierophant. And in English, he's called the vicar. And it's lovely how he's just sitting in the trees and everyone's gathered around all ages, listening to his wisdom. And it doesn't feel structured like the, the hierophant card does. It feels very um, compassionate. And for the sixth card, it's called the Fairy Bride. And so a little different energy, but we have that sense of there's choice to be made here. I think that's the primary message from the guidebook. But again, lots of details in the card to look for. And then here's a chariot. Kind of an intense... Uh, intense action here and also we've got something going on here and here so there's like three different chariots so your eye may go to different um, different light in the sky different storm it might focus on his face um, the reins are actually in his hands so the bird is reined which is something that 
it would be kind of cool if the reins weren't there actually. I like it when the chariot is driven just through will. And here's the strength card or fortitude, le courage in French. This is a beautiful card, just showing the connection between the bees and the energy of the bees, the life of the bees, and how the beekeeper is just, you know, one beautiful, beautiful strength card, or fortitude, I should say. And then here we have the hermit. And this is unusual for a hermit card. He's actually inside, in a contained space. Looks like he's in his a library, in his tree. Beautiful owl in the exterior. And this one's called the Wheel of Time. And so we have two fairies, one on the top, one in the bottom. We have the sun, we have the moon, and all the seasons represented here. It's a very gentle looking card. The magistrate. I love the intensity of the colors here. Also, in the back of the guidebook, there is a reference to all of the flowers that are that appear in the card and the energy of the flowers. So that is amazing because so many decks don't speak to the choices of the plant life that's chosen. But in this book, you have that opportunity to have a look at the flowers and then see what, what the energy of the flowers is and how that ties into the message of the whole card. It looks like a really difficult decision here. And if you read this as a karma card and as, um, you know, facing what, you know, what comes around, what goes around comes around. And it's, it's about, it's about balancing that action. And it, this really feels like, you know, he's making that decision here, but ultimately the decision is not, you know, up to the judge. That is something that's, determined by your action in the universe. So um, it feels, something feels not quite right with the Magistrate card. And here's the Hanged Fairy. Love that the cobwebs, the spider webs are around the feet of the Hanging Fairy. And the poppies. So yeah, so I plan on really bringing in the medicine of the flowers to, to readings, and I love that. And this will pair beautifully with a botanical deck. And we have the holly in the background here of the death card. And then we have Temperance. So the magic, the potion is being made by this fairy. We have the yarrow in the foreground. Yeah, I see so much potential with this deck. And I think taking time to get to know it and to really um, memorize or to, because sometimes the colors of the flowers are different depending on where you live. So I know this is yarrow. We have yellow and white yarrow where we live, but I know some people have, I believe, pink yarrow in other places. And so just kind of getting to, getting to know the details of the cards, it's wor definitely worthwhile taking some time to do that. Yeah. And then here we have I believe the goblin market. So this is the devil card. This is the card of excess, the card of addiction, the card of really um, checking in, right? And here is the tower. 
So the tree, you can see the flames in the tree up here, all the fae fleeing from the tree. And the tree that um, the author chose to represent here is an oak. So this is a, a tree that represents stability and foundation. And so the foundation is being blasted away here. I forget which deck it is. There's a deck that calls it the Blasted Beach. But here we have the Blasted Oak. That's not actually called that, I don't think. It's called the Burning the burning Oak. Beautiful star card. Love that. And then we have the Loon with the, the Luna Moth. The moon with the lunar moth. The fae gently resting in the flowers. And the, the variety of morning glory that, that blooms at night. And then we have the sun card. This with the sunflowers. Or perhaps Rudenbachia. Mm, I'll have to check with the guidebook, but it looks... A bit like a sunflower, very joyful card, dancing around what looks like a, a maypole. And there's a couple of cards that really illustrate this well. I think Lunea Weatherstone is such a brilliant artist. Um, so we're looking at the reflection in the water. Is this a time to move? To move forward, are you ready? Are you ready for this next step? Um, it's called the awakening. And I think that's such a suitable title. I know many decks use that for this card. It's just, it's a great, um, it's a great title for this card. But I also think that it's a choice, right? Are you, because if you, it's like the red, blue, red pill, blue pill thing, right? Like once you take the pill, you can't, you can't undo taking the pill. You can't go back. And here's the world. We have this beautiful fairy ring. And lots and lots to look at in the card, in the foreground, in the background. Just gorgeous. Now the order for these cards um, is a little different. So we have the courts and then we have the, and then ace through 10 for each of the suits. So we start with spring and we have the messenger of spring. Very cheerful. And you can see the transition of the season. So we still have icicles up here and then we have the beginning of spring happening so it's really nice right that you have that it's not just four seasons but we see the transition of the seasons as well too and then here is the cavalier the messenger of spring on his rabbit and you definitely do get a different perspective here the rabbit appears quite a bit larger in the french version And then we have the queen and the king. And this deck has done a good job with facings. Definitely see more yellow there. And there's the king. He looks very, um, what I want to say, very jovial. He looks very um, pleased with himself. I love his body language. It, like with his hands on his hips, it looks like, you know, he could be ready to dance. And then we go through, then we have the Ace of Spring. And we have the uh, butterfly on the kite, which is really kind of cool. And then we have the first blossom of spring. With a cloudy sky, which is so typical in early spring. And then we have the Two of Wands, or the Two of Fire. Just beautiful. You may hear that word far too many times in this video. And then the three of spring, represented by the three birds, the three by the three birds. There may be three kinds of plants as well too, but it looks like the fay is in the, in, like, in a tree.
And this one looks very Rider Waite, right? Four of Wands-ish. So the Four of Spring, the Celebration. Some of the Fae have, you know, like this is another one that has very uh, Victorian kind of costumes as opposed to more what I would think of as Fae attire. And then here we have the Five of Wands, the Five of Fire. Some of them are quite serious, some are quite mischievous. But definitely some kind of uh, conflict brewing here. But we have that purple color arising, right, which is not, it's not red. So it's a kind of a different energy than a typical five of ones. And then here's the six. The multi, multiple generations here supporting the woman in the front. Hmm. And then the seven. So perhaps, yeah, it looks like he's chasing the uh, birds away from his crop. So that is, you know, you can tie that in with the RWS system, the sense of defense, protection, standing up for what you believe in, standing up for what is yours. And then the eight, this is kind of cool. So we get that sense of, you know, the speed and action through the target practice, the archery. And I love this card. This is one of the first cards I drew in this deck. I love the light, the way that's coming in through the tree. So this kind of looks like inside the hermit's uh, tree. But it's the nine and there's just, there's a lot going on here. All of the shelves are full. Which is fine, you know, if you use all the stuff, but if you don't use all the stuff and if you don't clean out from time to time, things can become a bit overwhelming. Love all of the plants and everything hanging up here. And this could be a point of conversation too, whatever is happening underneath the glass. And then here is the 10. And I like this because you could choose any of the Fae in this picture and then focus on the energy of one in particular. Like one, the one who's fallen flat in his face here might, you know, come into conversation with a card that's, that is adjoining or perhaps, you know, one of the other ones in the background. You can definitely see the, the darker color in the Russian deck in that one. And then we go to your next suit. So we have the Messenger of Summer. And then we'll see a shift in the flowers. Sorry, that was the um, the page of summer. Sorry, not the messenger. That's I was reading the French, and here we have the cavalier. So now we have the knight of summer. So this is a suit of water, a suit of cups. And then the Queen and the King of Summer. Lovely that they're facing each other. They're very content in their surroundings. And then we have the Water Lily here. The Aces are very uh, simple in this deck. Very simple. And then we have the two the Lovers and the in the little boat. So two of cups, two of water. The three of water is just delightful. Love it. The birds enjoying the water, the women enjoying the water. This is the one I was talking about. So we see the reflection in the water again. So here we have the four of cups, the four of water. You can pull in the dragonfly, you know, lots of things. Love it. And then the five. So we have a sandcastle that is being taken down by the water. 
So your five of cups. And the seagull is just sitting there. Whatever. And the six of cups is a bit like the four of cups, but you just see the joyfulness and the older fairy just sitting back, really enjoying, you know, the nostalgia of the younger people who are able to move more, who are more agile, perhaps. And then we have the seven of summer. So again, a lot of stuff going on here, trying to decide which hat to wear to the summer event, the summer solstice, perhaps. Hmm. Doesn't look like um, too difficult of a decision. <laughs> and then we have um, the eight, which is brilliant. And I love that it's kind of going through a darker part of the forest. You can see the path ahead, but you can't see what's being left behind. So it looks like the de decision has been made and he's well, he's well on his way. And then we have the nine of summer, the nine of cups. And the 10, you can just see those two side by side. So we have several scenes in the suit of cups in the river. The river that brings the, the joy, the playfulness, um, the community that supports the community. And then we go to autumn, which is the suit of pentacles, I believe. The suit of earth. Here is your page. And we'll see a lot of um, like the harvest represented here. Here's your cavalier, your knight, and your knight of pentacles on the turtle, which has been done in other decks too, but it's just so apropos to have the knight on a turtle, the knight of pentacles on a turtle. And then there's the queen and the king. So the perspective is different with the different cropping. And you don't lose a lot of the artwork, but you do lose a bit. See here with the king, you've lost some of the leaves in the foreground. You're getting a closer up version and then it is backed up a bit. See, it's, yeah, it's completely different. I think every card is different. It's not cropped exactly the same for any one card. And then here's your ace of pentacles, which is very clever having the slice of the apple with the pentacle in the center. Two. It's a great three of pentacles. And there's a lot of fae involved here, way more than three, which really, you really get that sense of community supporting the project, supporting, you know, whatever's going on. And the four is, it's great. Um, Papa Squirrel will like this one if you're watching this video. And, you know, when I first saw the Five of Pentacles in this deck, I thought, yeah, you know, this is the thing that gets missed in the Five of Pentacles is that there's always a choice to ask for help. Do you really think that these two here would not be welcome, that there would not be enough to share, that they would be sent away or rejected. Sometimes it takes a great deal of courage to make that shift, to move out of the five of pentacles energy. And here's your six. One of the things about the six of pentacles that I really need to kind of work with is why is her back to the older woman? And I think that's something to, you know, to contemplate. It will definitely um, show up in neighboring cards if you're doing it in a, in a spread. And then seven of pentacles, which is very RWS. And then eight, love the eight.
works really, really well having the, the musical instruments there. And then we have our nine. And I like that she's an older woman too, because to kind of get to that nine of pentacles energy, it's not something that usually happens to a younger woman. And often the woman that's pictured in the nine of pentacles is very, um, is more youthful. And so this really works for me to have that. And then there's the 10. So we have lots of family members here, um, ancestors represented in photos on the wall, all ages of people. And then the last suit is winter. And it's really icy and cold and blue. So it's the only, it's the suit that's a, is a different color, but you still get that yellow goldy tones that you see throughout the deck. And here's your, your page. I really like the pages, um, scepter here with the blue stone in at the, at the top of the scepter. And then here's your knight. I imagine the knight sliding down and interesting that the knight has a blossom. So if is this actually blooms in the winter, um, that's something I want to look at. And then there's your queen. Ooh, she reminds me of somebody. Who does this queen remind you of? If you think of an actress and then there's the king. And that's kind of cool. You can see through his throne into the into the background and she has the she's has the ice up here and he actually has has plant life around his his throne so yeah if i had a criticism of this deck i think the aces are a little simple they don't really you know sometimes aces are they show the potential they show the um, the whole energy of the deck and yeah, all of the aces are just kind of, um, lackluster, unfortunately, in my opinion. And then here we have the two <laughs> facing back to back, ready to pace off. And that's nice. We have two fame. We have two birds. We have two swords. And then here's your three of swords. This is kind of an interesting card. And when I, when I was contemplating this card, I'm thinking at the, the pain and the, the potential um, danger and poison and toxicity of gossip. That's what really struck me when I saw this card. So, yeah. So as we go through these last few cards here, really have a look at the difference in saturation as well as perspective, because if you're looking to get your hands on this deck, one of these two versions might speak um, more loudly to you because of, because of that. Four of Swords, Four of Winter. And this card, I don't know, there's something about this five I don't like. I hope they're not hurting the animals. Feels nasty. Um, this six is very well done. The swan, the ice, the winter. You really get a feeling for um, the challenge and the difficulty of moving forward. And look at the expression of this fellow here. If you can see it, it's really like, this is a difficult time and they're looking back. They're not looking ahead, which is kind of that will definitely need to come into the reading. And then here's your seven of swords. So depending on what you're focusing on here, you know, sometimes for survival, uh, this needs to happen. It's a choice. Lots of questions that can be entered into with the Seven of Swords. And then here's the Eight. So traditionally, 
this is the one with all the swords around and often she's blindfolded and here she is wrapped up in ribbons she's holding a tray this card okay it reminds me of I think it's in Poppy Palin's deck there's uh, this overwhelmed mother it's kind of that energy of that card what am I supposed to do next? I've got so many things that I need to do. How am I supposed to figure out which one to do next? That was my dog, by the way, if you heard that on the video. Okay, and then the nine and the ten of swords, so the last two cards. So here we are in the winter looking inside. The animal is looking in to the shelter. Multiple animals looking into the shelter. So is the woman in fear of the animals that are on the outside? There's a moon, the full moon. The full moon is lighting the scene. Well, so many, so many options for reading. And then here's the last one. This is kind of a scary card. I believe that's a badger. And the fae is definitely in danger here. And then we've got all these uh, thorny branches here. Possibly the, you know, the blackberries in the winter. Ooh, the brambles. Yeah. So there you have it. That's the Victorian fairy tarot, the Russian version on the right, and the French version available through Amazon France on the left. Here is the box for the Russian version. So I bought this through eBay. And yeah. It's a little tuck box. When I first got it, I was a little concerned that it wasn't an authentic deck, but um, I was able to scan the ISBN, and it is. And there is no little white book that comes with this. You just get this tuck box, which has this odd little opening here. And then the French version comes in this large box here. I'll just back up the video. So this definitely looks like a Llewellyn box, um, but it does not say Llewellyn on the box. On the box it says AA or A and A. So I'm thinking that is the French, uh, the French version of Llewellyn because the box is definitely the same kind of construction as a as a Llewellyn box. Um, yeah. So yeah, that is AA editions. And then the book is the different paper as well, too. So most of the Llewellyn books that I have, the paper is white. And this one feels like uh, recycled paper. It's a really nice quality. And if I exercise the spine a bit, um, it's, it's bound really, really well. Yeah. All right. So let me shuffle the cards and then we'll do a quick reading. I had an oracle deck out here to to pair with this deck, but it's it's not a great pair. So we're just going to do a three card with the Victorian Fairy Tarot. So just bring your question to mind. What is it that you would like clarity with at this time? Take your inner gaze towards your eyebrow center. Take a breath in and out. And then let's see what we've got here. Okay, so we have the seven of spring. So as I said, this is definitely um, an RWS. It harkens to the RWS system. So there's this defense of sense, sorry, not defense of, well, the defense of, but the sense of protection and defending what is yours. He, it, it is springtime, so he's just planted his crops. The crops are just starting to get going and these birds here are hungry and they're looking for seeds. So, But also look at his step. He is lighthearted. He's not serious. He's not like he's taking a shotgun to these birds. He's got this very kind of playful um, device that he's created to shoo away the birds because the scarecrow doesn't happen to be working at this time. So if you are feeling like you're needing to defend yourself, maybe can you light, lighten, I want you to lighten up your perspective somehow. Like 
Try not to take it quite so personally, quite so seriously. What can you do to step back and look at the big picture? Because you may be taking this a little um, too seriously right now. And then on either side, we have the King of Autumn and we have the Five of Autumn. Okay, so this is a challenging time for you. And if you are needing to, um, if you need help, like I said, when I was looking at this card, that's what really strikes me is that the young boy is suggesting and they go over there and the this woman here is um, a little more reluctant. And so trust in the wisdom, you know, of the younger people, the younger people might have something to share with you maybe in the resolution of this situation here there's a younger person that can help you move through that what's the king of autumn doing sitting here the king of autumn is sitting here to support you and for those of you that have worked with me and listened to my readings before the court cards always reflect back the energy within yourself that you need to know that you have so you have the leadership skills, you have the strength, you have the resources. Maybe you don't have the money right now, but you have the resources to move through this challenging time. So I want you to, like I said before with this one, you need to kind of step back and figure out a different version of your action plan. Because right now your perspective on the whole thing is is a little too jaded. It's a little too close. It's not a big enough view. It's not a wide enough angle. Okay, so is that clear? So you want to look to younger people for support, for a different vision, for a different perspective. You want to allow the younger people in your life to kind of... Um, give you that lightness that you might need at this time this guy looks pretty light in his step but but you know what I mean like you need to bring in that sense of of uh joviality if that's a word um you you've got this you've got this in spades you've just forgotten how to go about and how to navigate through this um this difficult time uh, yeah, so I'm going to leave it at that. I don't know if that resonated with any of you, but um, I am really, really happy to have this deck in my collection. And now that I have it with the French um, descriptions below, it'll be a lot easier for me to work with than the Russian ones. And yeah, so I look forward to reading your comments below. For those of you that have the English version of the deck and you do use it all the time, let me know if you're still using it um, and when you use it, who you use it for. And I will be looking for some botanical decks or something to pair with it. This um, purple blue color is really kind of speaking to me. I'm going to be looking for a botanical deck and something to really contrast with the yellow because this whole deck is very gold. And so it's going to have to... the Whatever oracle decks you use need to kind of support and balance that gold color. Thanks for watching. Stay well and namaste.